Hey guys, welcome back to Black Desert, I'm Cranisex. So, in this video today, I'm just going to be talking about, I guess, what I think so far about Black Desert. I think this game is really huge. Um, now that I've gotten more into it and a lot more in-depth compared to, like, any other previous video, um, this game has, like, way too much to do. <laughs> Maybe, like, way too much in the sense that there's a lot of stuff you can do that I still haven't discovered. Um, I would say I sort of know what's going on in the game now, not so much like a noob anymore. Um, completed a lot of the quests in the game here, as you can see in the quest progress line here. And, um, like, you know, even like knowledge searching for, uh, like, bosses or whatever. World bosses like Kazarka here, S-ranking him to get higher drops, uh, investing in node areas and things. Hold on, let me just reset my course. I'm sailing in the night here in the pure darkness. So, <laughs> I'm just looking for islands right now. Um, just explored this entire upper region here. And I have like, um, where is it? I have stables here, like growing horses as well. So I'm trying to make myself uh, higher tiered horses. Um, if you need information, there's some stuff in the links below. If not, I'll make a video about it later. And I've got like three huge farms over here, growing stuff every day. There's just so many things to do. And then uh, there's also alchemy. Alchemy, I'm trying to build a alchemy lifestone. So these things are, these things take a while to make. You can be a grinder as well, which is uh, by about level 55, everything is really slow. I find that getting to level 55 isn't exactly too hard, but getting beyond 55 is insanely long. So it's just, uh, it's 33%, like, 33% EXP, that took me to about, like, a whole week. That's how slow it is. This map is not unfogging here, so I have no idea where I'm headed right now. There's an island that seems to be right in front of me here. So that's where I'm headed right now. Uh, what other what other things are there? There's quests all over the place. There are certain places where you want invested into, like um, the white cedar timber here. This is basically to help you with making grade three reform stones. Unless you're gonna wait until Valencia comes out, then there's a grade four reform stone, which will guarantee ultimate equipment. Um, there's this abandoned iron mine down here for iron and zinc. You want this place for black crystals and platinum ores as well. Uh, if you've got spare energy, invest into these nodes itself to increase the chances of your workers finding more. Send human workers there. Um, unless you want to dig them fast and send goblin workers there. If you send humans, humans generally have the highest luck chance. Um, equipment that you can eat upgrade as well as also like your ship equipment here and there's ship equipments that you can craft and then you can actually enhance them with uh, black stones so they're not just used for your gear here or whatever as well uh, there's also horse equipment as well that can be upgraded same thing black stones um, one thing with the ships is that you can get a uh, totem of the sea but that requires a hell of a ton of fishing so um, to level those up you have to equip the totem and then you have to fish somewhat close to your boat and you have to catch a particular fish for it to gain exp so if you're not really into like killing stuff or whatever and you're more into like relaxing stuff then you probably do like tons and tons of fishing like the fishing is a whole new, different kind of meta in this game i swear to god it's like a different kind of end game in, within the game it's kind of unbelievable so we discovered racid island in the world. Kunkka. Kunkka is my name. Wait, what? I found Kunkka. <laughs> Keel hauled a lot of them. It's Kunkka from Dota 2. Kunkka! There's a Kunkka up here. Um, <laughs> and there's red monsters here. Where are these? Pirates. I think these are level 50 monsters. Knowledge. What is that? Cox, Cox Raider? Cox Pirates. Okay. 
Well, this is, must be a minister of pirate island or something. Doesn't seem like there's very many mobs here. That's okay. I'll come and look for them another time. And I'll go to their home island entirely and just raid it down. Um, so yeah, there's, there's so much stuff to do in this game, like, holy shit. I don't know what to tell you guys other than that, like, this is a game where it feels more MMO than of lately of any other MMO I've ever played. The world is huge, it literally is massive, my boat is kind of slow. That's the whole thing with the fish totems thing. Uh, you can buy the fish totems at a fish vendor, so... The closest one I can think of is Kirio, Creo down here. And there's also like, uh, Kirio up here as well. Anything with these fish icons, they should be able to sell them. I think they're like 800,000 silver each. And then you need at least, uh, professional fishing to bring to, uh, power it up on a tier or something. Something like that. That's what I read when I researched it up, because I was like, what the hell is this icon here for totems, right? So that's, that's one of the other things. And then training... Uh, I believe, I believe high, higher training will help you train skills more, more quicker on a mount. Doesn't help their chance with gaining a skill though. That's completely just RNG apparently. And then if you're leveling horses, then uh, if you want to level multiple of them at the same time, make yourself a wagon. Wagons are very useful. You can equip like four of them to like a noble or a merchant wagon. So one of these things. You can tie four horses into them and then level four horses at a time. And then your training skill should go up pretty quick. Uh, taming a horse isn't too difficult. You aim the rope, throw it at the horse, when, and then if you tag the horse, then just move closer. But if they raise their legs, then you mash the space bar until you win the tug of war with them. And then afterwards, you uh, once you're close enough, you start feeding it sugar. If you get on too quickly, uh, the horse can still kick you off, and then you gotta do that again. <laughs> otherwise, there's, uh... Yeah, otherwise, you just you just feed it sugar and then pray that it doesn't kick you off. And then afterwards, you bring them to stables, and then you put a male and a female together. Breed them and hope for a higher tier. If you level up the horse to, like, beyond level 20 or something, or 10, 15... I think it's like 10, 15, 20, and then 25 or something, and then 30 obviously being the max. Um, the higher the level they are, the better the chances they will have to, uh, breeding a higher tiered horse. Oh my god, that's so much, so much details in this game. Freaking brain racking. So, Pirate Island's up there, and then I'm about to, I think I'm almost done exploring the entire sea here. I'm missing one place there, and one place on this island here, and then that'll be the entire world explored for up to Medea, and then Valencia will be this entire section here, that's on the screen right now, this entire section. And the cool thing that I read about <laughs> Valencia is that you're gonna need water during the day, and your character will need uh, tea during the night, so it's gonna be really brutal there, really harsh like conditions, environment as well, and your character can suffer from heat stroke or like dehydration or something, and those debuffs are really, really devastating apparently in there in the desert, so apparently there's also tents that you can set up to uh, camp in when a sandstorm comes by. If sandstorms come by, the mini-map's completely disabled, and a lot of other UIs disabled like permanently while you're within the sta sandstorm, so it's like, okay, it's time to get lost in there as well. And the world boss is like some dragon that uh, spawns in multiple areas too, so... There's a reason why I have this massive energy cap here of 358. It's literally to reset knowledge. I have um, a bunch of alt alts or whatever all sitting in Calpheon to reset knowledge as well. So every time I unlock knowledge, if it's not an S rank or an A rank or something, I reset it. Uh, apparently, I can't really find any hard confirmation or data. It's just everybody seems to be in agreement that S rank increases like drop rate. And all the other ranks are doing something else. C is only for... So what's being confirmed is that C rank knowledge increased... Uh, just shows the health bar like down when, when they lose HP. Um, B rank apparently increases your defense against the mob by a small percentage. 
Uh, a rank is you, de you deal more damage to it. A plus is you, you deal even more damage. And S rank, you you get higher drop rate on the mob. So, and it seems to be, a, it's somewhat confirmed based on people's results in grinding like 10,000 mobs or something. They just consistently get more drops overall compared to uh, people at C rank or whatever. And on top of that, you also want to make sure like a node level is like really high. So my highest node level here is like level seven. And you just have to pour tons and tons of energy into like spots like that to get it there. So like a level five here and like a level six one here as well. A lot of people are farming um, witch earrings, for instance, at Hex Sanctuary, so you want to pump those up as well. And try to get S rank mobs to just improve your odds overall for drops. So you don't have to necessarily grind overall. I mean, it is still RNG, but I mean, you want to do everything in your power to increase your odds so you don't get screwed over. Or either that, you can just make other people jealous, but then there are, of course, lucky fucks that just find like maybe four witch earrings in like an hour. And then people will be like, what the hell? And then they go over there and find the guy and PK him. <laughs> and be like, fuck your RNG. <laughs> Die. <laughs> so that's what happens. Uh, same with like, same with like ogre rings too. Like ogre ring is like probably one of the strongest necklaces in the game. Because it grants 10 AP. Those guys are found over here by the mansion forest. There's only like a few of them spawned at a time. So it's extremely rare. And if you ever get to upgrade the ogre ring, it goes up by 5 AP per upgrade. Is rather insane for an up for an accessory, and uh, yeah. Okay, so there's one more location down here somewhere that I think I missed. I'm pretty sure it's this one right here. Um, auto pathing's a little weird. And then also when you get uh, knowledges on bosses, for instance, on leaders. Uh, say for instance you got the knowledge on Dastard Bag or Mogulus or Karanda or Red Nose or anything like these, right? If, once you get the knowledge on these then um, you can you can get a quest from your Black Spirit daily and he'll just hand you the scroll instead of having for you to go kill mobs. So there is somewhat of a benefit there but then having a higher knowledge on those also increases your uh, your RNG rolls for boss armor as well for particular bosses like uh, Muskin and Dastard Beg. Everybody seems to be after Dastard Beg for his gloves because his gloves grant accuracy, which is very good for future PvP wars and whatever coming up soon. Um, Karanda is an upcoming boss that probably comes with Valencia. She, I think you have to kill her for your awakening weapon. And uh, so I'm probably going to have to reset this one. This one is given to you by talking to a guy somewhere in the Harvey Cliffs. I don't quite remember. I don't even know why I remember this shit. <laughs> so Harpy Cliffs, that's like somewhere up here or whatever. I think it's by Clarks or over here. You have to talk with him and have Amity or whatever and then, and then he'll give you the knowledge on Karanda because I don't remember how I got that. I remember, I was just like, oh, Karanda, I remember hearing about this world boss. People were talking about it. They're like saying Kazarka is hard. Fuck that, wait until you meet Karanda, and I was like, what the hell's a Karanda? And then I found it. And that's why I remembered it. <laughs> God. So yeah, and then apart from that, skill points, like, uh, I don't really know, guys. In terms of attacks, all I know is that grapples are really strong for PvP. <laughs> Although, I built myself more towards PvE because the reasons being are that I PvE a lot more than I do PvP. So obviously I'm going to invest in stuff that helps me PvE a lot faster than PvP. So, until I... Then, like, once I end up seeing myself PvPing more, then I'll gear myself towards PvP more often. Not the other way around, because PvE is going to help me grow my character faster, so I'm not going to... I'm not going to gear towards PvP if that doesn't grow my character faster than if PvE does. Uh, there's a red battlefield as well. I'll take a... Well, I'll show you guys that in the next next uh, video. It'll just be me getting trashed repeatedly. I can't do shit in, in red battlefield. I'm trashed. Uh, one thing you want to improve upon is accuracy. I don't have anything that grants very much accuracy right now. Um, if you want accuracy, I would suggest like Teratos armor. It gives overall pretty good accuracy. Uh, Mesto earrings. Mesto earrings gives those as well. Uh, Ancient Guardian core and seal. 
those are hard to get but it is also grants accuracy um, plus 15 your weapon will give a invisible accuracy bonus same with certain accessories if it says uh enhancement and effects in enhancement effects says increase accuracy then you want that as well for pvp um begs gloves are like one of the few equipment sets that give accuracy on the gloves glove section and it gives a lot i think it's like 12 accuracy or something data mined from other people and that's a lot of information and then pets as well pets like don't smash them together unless you have them at level 10. Uh, i spent some money getting some more pets because i got i worked <laughs> Freaking. And then I put this in together and I smashed two level one, uh, no, two tier one pets at level 10 and I got a tier three cat. And apparently that's really rare, so people hate me about that. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> but that's what I did. I mean, um, if, if, if it takes, I mean, if it's, if it's real money, you obviously want to smash your pets together at level, level 10 before putting them together. And also at level 10, they learn a special skill too, or whatever. So you can uh, decide if you want to transfer it over or not. And sometimes if you put two pets together, you mix them up or whatever, you can get a skin of a pet that isn't offered on the pearl shop. So uh, of course you can only combine pets at the same time. You can't merge like a bird and a cat together. It's, it just won't happen and work. It won't work, so. Um, yeah, so apart from that, um, birds are the fastest pickup times if you're like a massive grinder. Uh, cats and dogs have other things that they can do. I think when you smash them together, you, they can also have special different uh, skills apart from what is listed in the pearl shop. I think one of them is like a gather. And I've discovered the Kron Islands, the Waita Island. So I have 362 energy now. I've explored the entire world. This is quite insane. Jeez. <laughs> so I've done, I've tried to do most of everything in this game just to bring you guys this uh, information. So what do I think of the game? I think the game's great. It's still heading in a good direction. Uh, stuff like naval combat is coming out soon, maybe. I don't know. I don't exactly fully know. And um, this is the world so far. I feel like there's like something here that I'm missing, but I don't know. But yeah, that's that's Black Desert, guys. Massive mess of a map <laughs> with a billion things to do in this game that you probably won't be able to get done. There's like I don't even know what. There's no such thing as end game. End game starts at level one. Oh yeah, I made a berserker. Um, he's level twenty one. I got there in two hours, literally two hours. Um, probably gonna reach fifty with him like in a day or two. Uh, making an alt is really quick eat as well. Once you have your main character up and making alts is really quick, just make plus 15 weapons and then stash them in the storage at Ovia and then they can pick it up there. And then they afterwards uh, you'll just have a plus 15 weapon for level 1. You one shot everything. <laughs> He's kind of a lawnmower right now just wrecking through everything. There's Topaz here. Rare gems, this stuff is expensive. Let me just mine that out. I guess there's some gem nodes out here as well, which is nice. Find myself a topaz piece. How much is that right now? This is uh worth 16,000. I just found 16,000 silver. Six seconds, 16,000 silver, sure. Why not? Very good. That's another one. 32k of silver. That was easy. Alright guys, so that's it for now. Thanks so much for watching. Um, see you guys next time. Bye bye for now.